Anita's weekly videos. Um, this week it, we are talking about a question that one of our customers has proposed to us. Um, we thought um, many of you guys would, would probably have the same question and it would be easier to break it all down step by step to you guys in one short happy video. <laughs> we'll try and keep it short. Yeah. <laughs> Not our best quality. <laughs> um, so we have Three particular saws, it's the new Zubat, um, the Curved Sarugi, and the Sugoi. Um, and you need a wall take the reins on that one. <laughs> yeah, so we had this customer um, pose us the question, and we have it actually all the time. What is the best silky saw? Like, which one should I get because which is the best one? And there, there really is no answer to that because every silky saw is the best silky saw. There are so many, and I think there's over a hundred in the range. <laughs> Um, and it's not that all those beautiful engineers down at Silky and Japan are sitting there going, hmm, yeah, we haven't made a saw for a while, let's just make <laughs> another one. They actually have a purpose behind every creation that they come up with. So every saw is made for a specific use. And it's kind of, I often say to people, it's like butchers. They have a range of knives. They don't just have one great knife that does everything. They want one for fish, one for meat, meat like steak and all yeah. that sort of stuff. So depending on what they're cutting, it's which knife they need. And it's the same with saws, depending on what you're cutting, really depends on which saw is ideally designed for you. So the customer that we were talking to said to us, why would I want to purchase a Zubat Arborist, which is this one here, and why would I want the Tsurugi Curved and also the Sugoi 420. So you just wanted to ask what's yes. the difference between each one, what makes them so different as they are all for in the sense well, they're all curved pretty. as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. so they're all curved. So why wouldn't I just pick one of them? Why would I want all three? And I mean, that's a valid question. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So basically, let's break it down. It's quite simple. Your Tsurugi was designed to be a narrow version of your Zubat. So the Zubat comes in three tooth sizes, a fine tooth, a medium tooth or a large tooth, depending on how they describe it. Um, and then the Zubat Arborist, which is a large or extra large tooth. So graduating up in size, three size options in two. So the Tsurugi is mimicked on the Zubat, but in a narrow version. So when you pull that blade out, you will notice, and if you pull the Zubat out next to each other, they're substantially narrower than the Zubat. So the benefit of having it narrower means that you can get between branches. So if you're doing epicormic growth, new growth in a tree, Often that's in a fork or between branches, so it's quite a narrow spot to get into. So your Zubat's just a little bit too wide to get into those spots. Um, then somebody might say, well look, if this is handy because it gets into narrow spots, then I don't need the Zubat, I'll just get the Tsurugi. Well, the downside of the narrow blade means it's not going to be as strong. So if you're using it all the time, which you tend to with your general purpose saw, um, you're going to have a high chance of breaking blades. So that's where the Zubat comes in, because it's got the wider blade, it's a little bit stronger, a little bit more robust. Um, so that's great as sort of your general pruning, but when you need to do specific narrow cuts, or even between like palm fronds, it's great, yeah. between mm -hmm. palm fronds. And again, if that's all you do, well then yeah, you just need the Tsurugi. But if you do palms and you also, you know, do, do shaping and all sorts of other pruning, then you will really need a general purpose saw like the Zubat, and then a narrow one like the Tsurugi. So as I mentioned, the Zubat comes in three tooth sizes and a range of blade lengths. The Tsurugi is the same. You can get this in two tooth sizes, um, two blade shapes actually, and then a range of lengths as well. So there are options within both of these ranges, but basically this is the saw you have for those narrow, hard to get into spots. And then your Zubat's like your general saw that you use for branches sort of like my arm sort of size. Uh, brilliant for that. And then the third one they talked about was the Sagoy. <laughs> And then the third option is the Sugoi. So it's the same um, curved blade as well, but sorry, silly needles. <laughs> yeah, so the, <laughs> the Sugoi comes in two blade sizes, the 36 and this is the 420, is it 420? Yes. Good, brain's working. Um, so this basically is your step up from your Zubat. So the reason you would want the Zubat and the Sugoi is your Sugoi is basically an alternative to a small chainsaw. So that might sound ridiculous for some of you, but there are those occasions where it is more logical to use a saw than a chainsaw. If you're a home gardener and you've just got one or two limbs that you might need to cut, you know, and it could be something 30 centimeters down to something 20 centimeters, 
It is going to be faster for you to grab a saw out like the Savoy and use that rather than getting the chainsaw out, checking your oil, checking your fuel, making sure it's sharp, making sure it's still going because if you haven't used it for a while. Obviously, if you're a professional arborist, you used it recently, so it's all good. But um, it is handy sometimes when there is just a small job to use a large handsaw like a Savoy. Um, the other thing for an arborist, which is great, is if you have one of these in the truck or in your kit, there is those times where somebody forgets to put the fuel in the truck or, you know, the spare chainsaw. <laughs> well, that's it nowadays with the battery chainsaws. If the charger didn't work for some reason and no one noticed, the batteries aren't working. You know, if, if the job's like three quarters of the way through, sometimes it's quicker to just grab a hand sort of finish it off and go back to the yard, get another saw and come back. So these, the Segoys are really an option of what a small chainsaw would do, basically. So you wouldn't be using this for general purpose. The teeth are too big, it's too too aggressive a cut, you'll end up cutting yourself as well as the tree. Um, but brilliant as that alternative small chainsaw, brilliant for four-wheel driving. But those three saws we talked about, the Sugi, the Zubat and the Sugoi, they work brilliantly as a set. So if you want some saws to sort of cover all bases, these are great. That does your narrow, that does your general, and this is your alternative to your small chainsaw. Cool, but to throw the spanner in the works, we have the sugoi. So this sugawaza, sorry. <laughs> so this is I like a sugoi. Yeah. <laughs> so this is your fancy dress saw. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so this is um, the same style blade and teeth as the su sugoi. Sorry. Um, so it's basically the names are so similar. It gets confusing. <laughs> so it's like the older brother of the su um, sugoi. Sugoi, sorry. <laughs> but it has the slip guard on it. So say you are looking for one of those saws and you are safety conscious or your company is um, and you're just worried about the boys on side if they're putting too much pressure on the push stroke, even though they're not meant to. <laughs> but um, if they put too much pressure, this will help um, the hand from sliding down the blade. It'll just help. We actually had a customer ring yesterday and asked yes. what saws they would that Silky make with those slip guards because um, yeah, he's had his workers in the past push way too hard on saws and slip down and cut their fingers. <laughs> so yeah, great safety precaution if that might happen. Um, also, if you are working around like service lines, I think it is. Yeah, so lines and so yes. power lines. Power lines, there yeah. you go. Um, the, when you're wearing those special gloves as well, like even one slight cut in those gloves and it can just be all over Red Rover. Plus you um, have to replace them for health safety reasons and they're yeah. really expensive. So that's mm -hmm. another handy tool to have the slip guard on top. So if you do love the Sugoi but you do want the safety precautions around it with the slip guard, mm -hmm. um, then... This is it. I know. And it looks like a pirate saw. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm Now nah, this is, I've nicknamed this little pirate. This is, I love this saw. It's very cool. <laughs> and then um, all three saws are, are very smooth cutting saws as well. So yeah, that, we've nicknamed that the pirate and this one's been nicknamed in America the tiger. Tree tiger. Tree tiger. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're those three saws. I hope that's clarified why you would have more than one and what the difference between all of these are. The other thing I wanted to talk about briefly is cleaning. Now we say that, I think nearly every video, make sure you clean your saws. The blades have a, a hard chrome plating to give them protection. Actually, some of the blades have a different plating now, but all of these coatings are to protect them and prevent rust. But being in Australia, the, the saps that we have on a lot of our trees are very, very acidic and corrosive and will eat through that. So please clean your saws after you use them. Spray them with a lubricant. We recommend uh, lanolin, some sheep oil. Lots of brands you can get in Australia. That's just one of them. Um, a lot of your hardwares will sell them, or at, like any of your chainsaw mower shops as well, sure, oh, yeah. which is great. So spray that on after you've cleaned it. Now this is the product, oh, turn it the right way, that we recommend for cleaning. 100% natural, made in Australia, beautiful product. Has a whole lot of uses, but we use it a lot for cleaning the saws. And yesterday, I found a side bonus for it. I was talking to one of the um, one of the people here. I'm just thinking I'm probably out of shop there. I hope half of that wasn't half my body Anyway, <laughs> I was talking to him about when I was a child. I have these, every time I go and fill up fuel in my car, the smell of petrol reminds me of my childhood, which is an odd sort of reflection. <laughs> but it's because at the end of so many days as a small child, our father used to clean us down with petrol. And I was saying to this person in the office the other day, I'm like, I don't know why he did that. Like, what did we do that required us to be wiped down with petrol every afternoon. And it only dawned on me yesterday because I did a whole lot of gardening the day before. And I'm looking at my arms yesterday and I'm just kind of filthy. I was covered in all this brown stuff. And I had showered. 
but it was just all the sap from the trees that I'd been cutting and it stuck to my skin and soap and water didn't remove it like it doesn't remove that stuff it's sticky as and so I was actually using nail polish remover and then I went that's why my father used to clean us down with petrol is because he would take us to work with him and we would help cut wood up and throw up the truck and so we would be covered in sap and petrol obviously got it off really quickly and easily um, but this cleaning product that we've got what the staff member I was talking to said well go and try that on I bet it will clean it off and he was right I cleaned it off in seconds 100% natural, I'm sure it's 100% better than petrol for my skin. <laughs> and um, it worked a charm. So not only will it clean the sore really well, but it will clean all the sap off your body really well as well and save you from having to have a petrol bath like I used to. <laughs> so there you go, that's a side point for the rest. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then... If she I wasn't prepared for that story. No, I was just chucked that one in. <laughs> the wrong person. <laughs> Not going to go down too well. <laughs> but that's a wrap for all of, from all of us today and then all of us, me, two of us, two whole of us. <laughs> um, but um, we're not doing key rings this week. We thought we'll spice it up a little bit. Um, once a month we try exactly the same time each month, which doesn't really happen. <laughs> but once a month we um, send out a newsletter and it just basically um, shares bits and tips Bits and tips. <laughs> tips and tricks. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so we send out a monthly newsletter which yes. tells you anything new, anything great. I mean, we do talk about what we can in these weekly videos, but we probably forget stuff. So hopefully it's in that monthly email. Yes, and it also shows um, just a little bit about so what's new as well, um, what's happening in the Arbor Lab tree care world. Um, and yeah, that's that's all, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, so if you'd like to be on that mailing list, send us an email. Our email is silkysaws at hotmail.com. Um, or you can send us a message on Facebook, which is... Um, Silky Saws Australia, or yes. on our website, um, www.arbalab.com.au. And it comes up, homepage will have like a sign up to our little newsletter section. Yeah. So, so if you'd like to be a part of that newsletter, put your email on there. And also, if you wrote a review on our website, um, can you send us an email or something so we know where you are so we can send you a key ring? Because, yeah, we realised last week there was a slight problem. We had reviews and we're like, hmm, thank you, Roger, but we don't know where you live. So, <laughs> send us doesn't have a name, email, or address. Yeah, so send us an email so we know where to send you key ring. Or you can give us a phone call. Yeah, that's Too true. Easy. Call us. We love, we love hearing from you. Yes. <laughs> See ya. All right, thanks for watching.